Hi everyone, I'm Breed002. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, I'm doing a video on the Dash Command app for iPad. Um, right now I'm connected to my 2000 Mercury Sable 2, and this is the device that plugs right into the OBD2. It's called, I think you can see, it's called the GoPoint BT1. Um, it's Bluetooth connected right to my iPad, which I have mounted up here. It's um, so this is a Dash Command app right now. You can see um, it's you know you got my RPM there. If I pump the engine a little bit, it'll boost up. It, it's not instant. Um, you know it takes a few seconds to, or not a few seconds, but you know it takes half a second before it registers, which is fine. Um, we have what we have to do is we have to you have to put in all the info about your car before you can do anything. So we got my car here. And um, it will put the VIN number in. I don't know why it hasn't yet. I can, if I reconnect, it'll do that. Um, you know, we to get fuel efficiency, we have to put our how big our fuel tank is, and displacement, what the volumetric efficiency is. Which I just put the the lowest recommended. Um, you can calculate that, um, but right now we're just leave it at 60. Um, it already has a mass airflow, so we don't need to put the PID. It does not have lambda for this car. I don't know what the PID is. I don't know if it exists. Um, tire size, your final drive ratios, which are your uh, drive ratio times the, or I don't know, let's see, hold on, it's the uh, drive, final, it's the gear ratio multiplied by the drive ratio, yep, that's what I was saying. Wheel circumference, curb weight, any additional weight, that's me, 220 pounds, yeah, I'm a heavy guy. Drag coefficient, frontal area, which, thanks to Bell and La, or however you say it, um, you can get by taking a picture from 50 yards away, and then, um, taking a uh, 12 by 12 piece of cardboard or something and comparing. Uh, max engine speed, which is fuel cutoff at 6,500 minimum, which it can go, low, go below 700, but you know, that's usually idle. Um, ship point, that's only for manuals. It's fuel type gasoline. They give you E85 diesel, E100. Um, and then tire rolling resistance coefficient. I don't know what mine is for these tires, so I just use what they said the default should be. Don't need a speed correction, that doesn't matter. So we have my car chosen, so we're going to go back. Um, it also does diagnostics. It says that I don't have my evaporative system readiness monitor completed. I have no codes. Yay. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. And now the evaporative monitor is completed. Good. Okay. Um, it can do a racetrack feature where it will actually take GPS, which I don't know why it's not showing up right now. And it will show you where you've driven and you can create a racetrack. Red being um, braking, green being acceleration, yellow being neither. Um, skid, it gives you a skid pad, which is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Haven't had a chance to use it yet. I mean, don't want to ruin this car. Inclinometer, if I zero it right now. So now this is zero. Um, then we got the dashboard, which is the most important part. Mine is slightly different than the default dashboard. Um, the default one, these will not be separated. They're one, you have to click it and then click it again and it'll have you do the second one. So we have our booster vacuum, which obviously here is vacuum. That's really weird. Oh, that's my minimum. Okay, maximum. And that's current. And then for some values, it gives average. So then we have um, G Force Accelerate, uh, Slow Down. We have horsepower and foot pound torque. It's not very accurate um, at all. I don't even have all the data in, so I can't say much for it yet. We have fuel efficiency here, um, 0 through 5 minutes, 0 through 30, 0 through 3 hours. This is again calculated, um, and to get it perfectly correct, the only way to do that is by adding every time you fill up and then having this connected every time the car is running, and that's the only way to get it 100% accurate. Um, otherwise, it, it is pretty accurate um, if you get all the data in, but it's not perfect. We got our fuel flow in gallons per hour. 0.5 is a little high. It's usually 0.4 for this. Um, it'll show your max fuel flow. See if I rev it. We got more fuel flow there. I think I got up to like, if, if you floor it and it gets to, you know, red line, it, it ends up being about 17 gallons per hour. Um, okay, then we have a bunch of just data about the car. Um, average fuel economy, distance traveled. It also tells you your CO2 emission rate. Interesting. How many pounds of carbon dioxide you've let out. Um, how much fuel you've used and then it shows you all your averages here and it will show you like for instance max engine speed 6135 
The only way I can seem to get 6500 is if you drop it down to 1, but it's really easy to hit the rev limiter then. Because it takes so long to shift up when you drop it back into D. Um, it says my max power is 163. Obviously this car is 200 horsepower, 174 foot-pound torque. A little bit closer. I mean, that's not that bad. That's, that's close, but it's still pretty far off. Okay, um, now the other thing about this is you can do, you have two trips for it. You have your, um, today you have your previous day and you have your since last fill up. Um, we got our timing, we have our engine coolant temp and then our mass airflow and then it calculates the mass air pressure, I guess. And then you have the intake temp. Hot air intake, this would be 100 something, but I put the stock intake air box back on and it's dropped down to the outset temp, which is 57. I don't know why that's lower, one of these is wrong. We have our calculated engine load, our fuel pressure, which if I rev it, I think it's supposed to go up, but it goes down, I don't know. Um, fuel trims, bank one, and then we have bank two here, and then if you have a bank three or four, um, as long term and short term fuel trims. I like the graph, it, it honestly, it's a really good way to kind of figure it out. When I had my PCB elbow crack, these were off the charts at plus 25, because that's where it cuts off. Um, this doesn't really do anything for automatic transmission. It, it will for manual. Uh, it's kind of just helpful time when to shift. It, you know, you can set it to maximize fuel economy or performance, or well, performance is obvious, but then you have your fill up and how many gallons you're adding and how much the price is. So this is the Dash Command app, and let's go take a drive with it. I live by an airport, an airplane coming out. I live on a college campus, actually. So. We're going to go over towards the highway here, which in St. Louis, I'm going to head towards 170. actually have to go to Sam's and pick up a prescription. So we see dash command here. I turn the brightness all the way up. Hopefully you can see it well. Oh, it's going to be shaky, I understand. So it, the, the speed is fairly accurate. Um, the speedometer actually is higher than it is. So this says 25. My speedo says about 26, 27. Um, so it, it really is pretty accurate. And see, now it's giving me horsepower and torque. And some people think it's so bogus because it doesn't read your actual horsepower and torque when you're like idling. And it's like, what the heck? It, you only get max horsepower and torque at certain RPMs. So we're turning left here. And if we go to engine one, uh, red light, we see my coolant has warmed up. It's still not hot by far, 162 degrees Fahrenheit, and right here it's telling me it's just at the bottom line of normal range. So I'm assuming the oxygen sensors are heated by now, so these are the fuel trims. It's in fourth gear right now, I'm going 70 miles an hour, just under 2500 RPM, pretty flat here. So it looks like long term, just around zero, maybe up slightly, but it's all to be expected. Engine load obviously changes based on how much gas I'm giving it. We're back to timing, coolant temp. Timing's all over the place. Intake temp's still nice and cool, it gives a lot of power. Since it's 57, 58 degrees out, you know, coolant temp staying down pretty well, even with the high RPMs I was giving it. Yeah, the coolant temp sensor on the dashboard is now giving me the normal reading. An idiot behind me in an Xterra. Man, I hate this highway. Woo! I feel like you have a little more power in third gear when you hit that torque band. Torque band is pretty nice on this Duratec engine. I really like it. Okay, we go to fuel economy. My average is 16 miles a gallon. Since I'm coasting, it instantaneous pops up to 60. I don't know how accurate this is. You can see the fuel flow there in gallons per hour. So floored, yeah, 6.7 miles a gallon going 80 with the pedal of the floor and dropping it into, th th into third gear. That's Dash Command for you in a nutshell. It's a pretty cool tool. It's expensive. Uh, $50 for the app. The actual um, the actual little 
Bluetooth thing cost me another 60. It's supposed to be 120. I got it half off. It was a pretty good deal. So, um, that's that command. Um, apparently, in the near future, the company GoPoint, who made the Bluetooth thing, is a completely separate company from Palmer Forrest, who makes Dash Command. Um, the GoPoint, they said early next year they're going to have um, support for ABS code reading from the GoPoint. So I'm kind of excited for that because I want to read my ABS codes and I do not want to spend any more money for it. So um, GoPoint actually makes some free apps that you can use with it. You can get oxygen sensor voltages. You can get a lot of stuff with it. it the app sucks, but you can get all the data with it and it, you know, you can get MIL light codes easily. Um, I don't know if you can get transmission codes. I don't know if you can get ABS codes. My guess is in the future you will be able to. But until then, I am now getting off the highway because the highway ends. So that's my video on Dash Command. Thanks for watching.